Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Feeling better after posting that ranting video on Friday, which that includes the trailer reaction of two horror remakes, which I'm not looking forward to. And I apologize for that, but you know, things are not going right a lot lately, and I just really wish, you know, my channel would actually stay strong and not, and not um, have any problems going around. I mean, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. But the fact is, you know, I just want to continue to post videos and sometimes I want to take a break like everyone else does. So, I just don't want this to keep on going forever and ever. You know, I just want to, you know, I just want everything to be exactly the way it should be. Okay? That's all. So, I'm sorry about that. But nevertheless, though, um, I just hope we don't have to go for this crap. But, I, I mean, it will happen, though. But I'm just hoping, you know, I'm just going to stay active, be able to uh, continue, and hopefully nothing goes wrong. I mean, I hope I get more views on my videos. I hope, you know, I get more subscribers, and I hope everything will go okay. And so that way, you know, nothing bad happens. And I'll, I will to take, and I'm willing to take the risk to, you know, post some other videos that I'll try my best not to have any copyright laws and everything, because I always fix them. Well, anyway, uh, after that, um, at least um, I celebrated my grandmother's birthday, and we had a fun time, and we spent time with the family, and we just had food, and along with the cake. Yeah, we were getting four ready by then. But, hey, you know, everything was going great. I mean, nothing bad happened. <laughs> I mean, yes, I had to deal with the diet thing going around, but, you know, it's always good to take a break. Um, but we're going to continue. And I am going to sign up for another PE class as usual. So, hopefully this will be for the better. But anyway, uh, after we did that, uh, we finally went to go see a movie. And I'm going to review the film this week called The Lego Movie 2, The Second Parts. Yep, it's a sequel to the original The Lego Movie, which also had spin-offs, The Lego Batman Movie, and The Lego Ninja Go Movie. Yeah. And, of course, I do have um, The Lego Movie and the Lego Batman movie. I haven't done a review on that yet, but who knows? Uh, maybe someday I will, just not right now. Um, but I don't have the Lego Ninja Go film on, on Blu ray yet, so hopefully someday I'll, I might take a chance. But that's not a bad film either. Um, I've seen it. I mean, it, it's, it's what it is. But, hey, you know, it, it's good that we finally got one because, you know, Legos are becoming as popular as it should be. So, you just can't go wrong with it. <laughs> yeah. Because I know when the first movie came out, you know, they were feeling a bit optimistic and naive about it. Thinking this is just going to be basically a over a hundred minute uh, toy commercial. But it's more than that. It has a story. It has characters. I mean, it, it basically focus on what they're going for. You know, even though they did focus on, you know, all the the pop culture references, all these random jokes, and of course the the song that just never gets stuck in your head. <laughs> well, they're going for that too in in this sequel. So. But in the end, I'm I had a good time. And I did saw the film in 3D as well. Yeah, I have these 3D glasses. <laughs> yeah, those real uh, D3Ds. <laughs> but, hey, it's really cool to, to keep up. Uh, the movie stars Chris Pratt, uh, Elizabeth Banks, Will Arnett, Tiffany Haddish, who was previously in the film Night School with uh, Kevin Hart. Yeah, I didn't like that film at all pretty bad but hey I mean she's alright in this one 
not as much, but whatever. <laughs> Stephanie uh, Beatrice, uh, Charlie Day, Allison Bree, Nick Offerman, uh, Will Farrell, Richard Ayedi, Chad and Tatum, Jonah Hill, Kobe Smolders, Jason Momoa. Well, this is a big cast. <laughs> I'm just going to keep on going. But I'll cut it down a little bit. Um, and Maya Rudolph. It's written by uh, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, you know, best known for not only writing the original film, as well as producing and coming up with the story here. Their own story. That's part of it. But they also have worked on films like 21 Jump Street. <laughs> to know that they actually uh, can take a great idea and, and make it more funnier and better. <laughs> yeah. And it's directed by Mike Mitchell. It's the same director who gave us uh, movies like Sky High. Uh, Shrek Forever After and <coughs> Trolls. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just didn't like that movie, and that's my attention. That's a fake cough. Okay, well, you get the idea. The movie begins five years after the event in the first movie, where we led to the Lego universe. The Duplos had invaded uh, Britsburg and turned it into a post apocalyptic wasteland, simply known as Apocalyptic Berg, but they continue to evade um, periodically. But the ordeal had made most of the uh, Apocalyptic Berg citizens harden, but Emmett, the construction worker, had remains in his upbeat self, but wants to move into a dream home that he built by hand with Lucy, you know, Wild Style herself. Yeah, because unfortunately this actually centers around you know, Lucy herself having to deal with what's going on because she is a very strong character. But Emma is actually having a premonition of his own that he begins to find out that there's actually an Armageddon, yeah, Armageddon, that's ready to happen at 5.15. So part of this might have been his dream. But it seems to me like this prediction is going to come true, as it seems. Uh, General Sweet Mayhem, the leader of the Duplo army, had arrived at Optolithic Berg and announced that Queen Whatever Wannabe, and that's how it's pronounced, of the Sistar system intends to wed Batman. Yes, Batman. <laughs> so Mayhem forces to kidnap him along with Lucy, Benny, Metalberg, and Unikitty just to take him all the way there. And there, and Emmett uh, was trying to um, you know, have to join with everyone to actually save them because even though he accidentally um, opened the door, but he wanted to let out the, the star that was attacking them. Yeah, because they started bringing in all these these hearts and stars that creates all these bombs and stuff. So that was just hilarious. But everyone refuses to to team up with Emmett, so he decided to um, go on his own by since already his house was destroyed you know, during that attack. Um, he decided to build convert his entire dream house into a spaceship just to give him pursuit to actually save him. Now as um, as those characters have went into the Sistar system, I mean, they suddenly become brainwashed. They started putting in some pop music, a catchy song that they put in that, that actually gets stuck in your head and will never get out. Yeah, so it seems like everything is not awesome as we expected. <laughs> so. so Emmett just continues to save them, but only that he's being saved by colliding with an asteroid field and that's where we meet a rugged adventurer named Rex Dangerves. Yes, and he has you know everything 
that he ever had since he's one of the toughest, strongest you know, guys ever. He has all these uh, velociraptors, he has an awesome spaceship and all this other stuff. He teams up, he actually teaches uh, Emmett to become tough like him and that way he'll be able to find a way to save his friends. And that's what he was doing. But as, as it goes along, that's when they wound up, um, through all these asteroids, they went to like a shady, um, beautiful town. That's where we spotted all the Justice League and, and all the rest of the characters. And, and they're all dancing into that catchy pop song that just continues to go on and on and on and until it starts to uh, brainwash them. <laughs> So they're trying to find a way not to let that happen, so they had to escape. Um, Rex actually taught him to use that power to actually, you know, break down the entire world and, and go straight into the next android or so. Lucy's trying to find a way to escape and try to find Emmett. Yeah, he just went into <laughs> a um, an air vent. Which I know at this point on, um, they did throw in uh, Bruce Willis. <laughs> so he makes a cameo. Sort of doing his uh, John McClane. <laughs> we love that. And then we begin to find out about her hair color. But, of course, we, I don't want to get that <laughs> mixed into it. So as far as this is concerned, I mean, it was up to both Emmett and Lucy as they came with each other, with Rex joining in to actually save their friends from being brainwashed and try to stop it before our Armageddon starts as he predicted it at 5.15 yeah. so I'm just gonna leave it that way you know I don't I don't I mean the film does have a twist not to spoil too much but um, unlike the first movie you know which actually had their own twist and it even has uh, a very good twist to really change uh, you know their minds and everything this one kinda went for a different route which at this rate it is pretty cliche and that's probably what suffers uh, the story uh, completely so we have a feeling that it's just like the first film but only they just added a whole darker um, universe between the others so I guess it just proves why everything is not awesome, but whatever. But it does center it around uh, Lucy, even though Emma joins in. So I, the whole point of the story was was having Emma become a lot tougher instead of being special. So that's the importance here. And it's also good that you know it does focus on Lucy too because it even proves that she's not brainwashed. So she's still. Her strong self, you know, trying to save everyone. But things have to go completely wrong as it seems. But it's still heartwarming, still hilarious. I did laugh, so I had fun. But after a while, yeah, some characters that they join in doesn't work. Or sometimes they do. But I guess that's the idea that they wanted to have. Like, at times, uh, Queen whatever wannabe just comes across as being annoying you know like at times you, you either want to hate the character or I don't know maybe you want to take your time to get to like her as much but always or maybe laugh at some of her jokes or whatever but at this point on she's just what she is and I just think it didn't work and then I know there's going to be other characters joining in which it's going to lead to that which kind of hurts a little bit um, but yes, uh, that catchy song is just as irritating as I'll say, uh, and I'm, I can't believe I'm going to say this, Rebecca's Black's uh, Friday, you know, with this auto-tune, cringe-inducing kind that you just can't handle. And trust me, I hate having to deal with that in today's generation, let alone in the past, because I, I just... See, this is why I'm not a big fan of of today's pop music, because you know how bad they really are. 
it's always auto-tune, it's always lyrics that makes no sense, and and they always have to go for a catchy vibe that it just never gets stuck in your head and just keeps repeating it over and over and over. So it's an earworm. That that is really something you can't handle. Um but I gotta say, I did love the, the character Rex um, Danger Vest because it's basically a parody of Chris Pratt when he plays all these characters. So it's a mix of all of them. Like, for example, everything from Star Lord from the Guardians of the Galaxy, um, Owen Grady from Jurassic World movies, uh, uh, Burt Macklin from the TV show Parks and Recreation that was on NBC. Um, Joshua Faraday from the remake of uh, The Magnificent Seven. Yeah, I haven't seen that one, so I, uh, I can't explain. Um, so it seems to me like, yeah, he's just playing himself in Lego form. So I, I really love the character that they join in. But it just feels like that's where we're going to lead to that twist. But I don't, I don't want to give that away. Um... But hey, it's cool because, you know, I thought it was interesting that Chris Pratt got to play a, a different character besides Emmett. <laughs> um, but all the characters uh, join in. I mean, it's great to see the original cast from the previous film, so at least they're still there. But it's always interesting to see some new characters joining in, as I mentioned. But some work, some don't. There are a lot of random jokes, as as what you expect, because when you watch the the movie, they always go for a lot of uh, fast-paced jokes and some jokes that even kids wouldn't get, but adults will. So that's understandable. Um, hey, but it's fun. Um, yeah, some jokes work, some jokes don't. I mean, they can also get repetitive too, like war. I mean, war, war, war. <laughs> yeah, when Lucy was about to say that, and, and then Emma joins in, like the bruising. <laughs> That's her way. Um, so, and of course, they still have the song, Everything is Awesome, but then they also came up with their own verse. I mean, it's cool to see a lot of references, you know, a lot of pop culture references, going from, you know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, you know, the, Green Lantern, yeah, the, the DC Universe, as we know. And they also joke um, other films, too, that they put in. And they, like, everything from, like, Lord of the Rings or, <laughs> again, you know, the Marvel films and the Jurassic World films, uh, yeah, like Jurassic Park. Even the Wizard of Oz, too, yeah, they even make an appearance, I love that. Like, you can see Dorothy, the Tin Man, uh, the Cowardly Lion, <laughs> and uh, the Scarecrow. So, they're, they're all there. So, all in Lego form. The animation is still the same as usual. You know, it has a mix of stop motion animation, but all computer generated in Lego form. <laughs> It's not exactly as awesome as the original film, but that's all right. What matters the most, though, is that in the end, it's a fun movie. It's still entertaining. But nevertheless, they still have the writing by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. I mean, they took some time to rewrite the script just to make it better. So I can see how that's going on. Um... And hopefully it's going to do pretty well at the box office, because I know the first film was a huge hit, as opposed to their spin-offs. Or, well, maybe except for the, the last one. I, I could definitely deal with this. <laughs> anyway, but Mike Mitchell did a fine job directing this. I mean, I mean, at least it's a better movie than Trolls, so I'll give you that. Um, but I could definitely see what he's doing. Because, you know, he's an animated director himself. So he does tend to throw something that's, that they had to offer. So anyway, um, but still, check it out. Um, you'll have a fun time. or But 
just be aware though like there might be some cliches and all this other stuff in there and it'll never top the original film granted it will never top that because it will always be a classic but still it's worth it so anyway that's the Lego movie 2 the second part and I give it four stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and hopefully everything will be still awesome to this day. See you later. Bye.